Hey, welcome to Pause on Purpose. We're wrapping up this week, but we're not wrapping up this study because it continues long after this Pause on Purpose with your own personal study on the word hope. And I hope you will do that as well. Romans 15, 3, we are finishing up there. And on uh, the first uh, cast of Pause on Purpose, we talked about how we have a God of hope that cannot lie. And he promised the hope of salvation to us long ago. Second day, we talked about how those promises of eternal life to the Gentiles was promised by God through the nation of Israel by the mouths of Moses, David, and also Isaiah. On the third day, we talked about how not only did God promise it through those men and those books of the Bible, but he finally promised it through the revealed word of God in the person of his son, Jesus Christ. Yesterday, we talked about how that hope produces joy unspeakable and full of glory and peace in our hearts. Well, how does this trifecta get produced in our lives? Is that something we have to try to engineer ourselves? Of course not. God's never asked us to do something that only he can do. Read along with me in Romans 15, 13. I'm going to read the whole verse again so we get it in its entirety. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. See, the whole goal of God is to produce in us a hope that is so supernatural, so above the world, that this world doesn't face us. That the circumstances and events and tragedies and celebrations, we walk through those knowing that God is in control, and we anticipate from him with the expectations that everything will turn out. In the long run, God wins. And so we have that anticipation with the expectation based upon God's character, his person, and his promises. That's hope. So when we ask for God to fill us with hope, joy, and peace, he does so in order to help us superabound in hope. Well, how is that all engineered? How does that generate? Well, he tells us it's by the person of the Holy Spirit. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit. So here in chapter 15, starting in verse 9, all the way through 13 and the rest of the chapter, we see the Trinity involved in this um, concept of producing hope in us. God promised it. He's the God of hope. He promised it through the voices of Moses, David, and Isaiah. And finally, through the person of Jesus Christ, that's the second person of the Trinity, and it is produced in us by the third person of the Trinity, the person of the Holy Spirit. So, beloved, when you pray this for yourself and for others, we do so with faith, believing that God's going to do it. And when we do that, we will be overflowed with hope, peace, and joy. So we abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Beloved, I can't think of a better way to end this week, to end this month, than to look you right in the eyes and tell you that God wants you to be a person of hope. Not a hope as in hope, 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 but a hope that has anticipation with expectation based upon the person and the promises of God. And the more you study God's person, the more you study his words and his promises, the more you will have hope in your soul. And then it'll be a breeze to go with God because you know he goes with you. He promises it. 
And that gives us hope. God bless you.